Hello and welcome. My name is Stephen Dickens and we're coming to you live from Share in Dallas. I'm joined today by Richard from Kindrell. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure. It's great to be an in-person event again. After all these years, fantastic. It does. It kind of feels like there's a real buzz down there on the show floor. People kind of glad to be back out and in person. Yeah, I mean, they've been... They've been at home, they've been you know, stuck behind screens for two years and it's great to be able to re-establish old friendships, see people you've not seen for a, quite a while. So Richard, for our listeners and watchers, tell us a little bit about what you do for Kindrel. All right, so uh, Kindrel, which uh, was a spin out from IBM about uh, four or five months ago. Uh, it's about a uh, $19, $20 billion company. Um, and with 90,000 employees. My role in the company is um, we've got about 8,500 people who look after mainframes, so you know this community, and I'm the CTO for everything that is to do with mainframes in Kindrel. That's so that's, that must be a huge role. Give us a little breakdown of sort of what that involves from a technology yeah. point of view, because that's a huge landscape. It, uh, it spans the gamut. Right. I mean, with um, you know, with six million MIPS under service delivery, with the number of systems that we've got, you know, we literally look after ZOS, ZBSE, ZBM, ZTPF, any you know, any operating system you'd like to run, and we've got a little bit of everything from all of the suppliers and a lot from you know some of the others as well. So not only IBM software, but Broadcom, BMC, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. I get, to, uh, I get to worry about all the different uh, aspects of the business, um, you know, up to and including the, the new business ventures that we're doing with the likes of uh, the hyperscalers, like uh, Microsoft, as we take the, the mainframe and start to extend it and get it closer to the, the hyperscaler environments, uh, and how we can take new technologies, modernize the mainframe environment, get it uh, more closer to uh, a hyperscaler environment or just modernize on the platform, you know, maybe, you know, repurposing or moving applications from the mainframe to a new environment. So, you know, Kindrel has a view of right platform, right workload. And so what we're able to do here with the, the tools, the techniques and the skills that we've got is literally enable people to modernize their mainframe in place or you know, start to move some workloads around, connect it to hyperscaler and other environments in a consistent way, um, together with a uh, integrated uh, application development story. And mainframe modernizations come, in, come out as a theme across most of my conversations over the last couple of days. What are you hearing from clients as you engage? What are you hearing from them as they look to sort of modernize that mainframe environment? They are... Um, questioning. They're not questioning doing it, they're questioning how to do it, right? Where do we get the skills to do it? Because a lot of them are suffering from uh, a lack of skill in, the, in their own shops. You know, people are retiring, the knowledge base is retiring. How do they go about, uh, you know, building the skill to be able to go in and open up the applications and data that they've got and they want to reuse in the environment? Um, so, you know, you take something uh, from the world of Kindrel. So, as I said, we've got about 8,500 uh, engineers. Average age is about 30. And we do that through a, um, a skilling and staffing program that you know, can constantly refreshes the pool, but it also gives them exposure to additional techniques, skills, whatever that you know, they need in order to go in and help do the transformations. Now, clients are they're worried because you know, maybe we don't know everything about the applications that we're going to do. They don't know about the technologies that they need to use in order to do it. And you know, that, there's a lot of fact-finding. I think that would be the best way to describe it. Some people have done some of it. Right? They've, tried, they've played around a little bit. They've, um, they've experienced, they've got some successes, they've got some failures, they're learning from it. And the, the main thing, the main message is, don't be scared, right? This, the technology's there, it's robust. Um, and it's as much a story of technology transformation as it is a story of talent and human culture transformation as you bring you know, the mainframe and the hyperscaler environments together in a much more um, hybrid cloud style. You've mentioned hyperscalers a few times in the conversation so far. 
What are you seeing? Obviously, there's a lot going on, particularly at this show, from the mainframe of the on-premise side. What are you seeing from the hyperscaler side? We've seen announcements from Microsoft and AWS and Azure. What are you sort of? What else are you seeing in this space? So what we tend to see is, uh, you know, once again, it, it, it runs a range of a range of uh, topics. Um, it goes from something like uh, I want connectivity between my mainframe and my nearest hyperscaler entry point, public hyperscaler entry point, to maybe having a uh, private um, hyperscaler deployment in the data center near my mainframe. Um, and then they get to, you know, well, that gives me uh, latency or fixes my latency issues. And then they start to move into, well, okay, I'm going to start doing some application integration between new apps on the hyperscalers and, and on the mainframe. Then they want to get into some data sharing, you know, either dynamic data sharing or, you know, an export transform reload of the data into a hyperscaler environment and vice versa. Um, and then you know, they finally move into a single management of a combined environment between the hyperscalers and the mainframe, where from you know, single console or single playbook, they can you know, drive operations on both sides of the equation. Um, and the, the hyperscalers are playing in that space, um, along with you know, there is workload that is going to move off permanently, which is perfectly valid, right? There's no, no problem with that. I mean, Kindrel's approach is right platform, right workload. And uh, so there's going to be some workload moving. There's going to be some applications which today sit solely on the mainframe but will be split apart. And some will stay on the mainframe, some will go into a hyperscaler environment. And then there's going to be some that just get modernized in place on the mainframe with some connectivity maybe from a hyperscaler to the, the back end. It depends, you know, in many instances, customers are dealing with the mainframe is looking after their crown jewels and they are scared mm -hmm. about, you know, maybe doing too much um, and they shouldn't be, right? It's, uh, the environment is robust. The tools and techniques are available in the mainframe environment. In the DevOps environment that you want to wrap around it, and the connectivity options and toolings are also available in the hyperscaler environment. So, so, so we've got obviously a lot of people here. I think consensus estimate is about a thousand attendees in person, which is great to see. A lot of people consuming the content online and maybe what sort of catching up. What would be the three key takeaways that you'd have for those people if you could influence them from a Kindrel point of view? Don't be afraid to try the new technologies on the mainframe mm -hmm. with expected business value. So don't, you know, have, a, have a, a good business reason for going and doing what you want to do. Um, certainly, you know, don't be afraid. Think about the application developer experience because, you know, we've all seen it over the years. You win the hearts and minds of the developer, the application developer, and the rest then just starts to flow as a result of it. So don't forget the application developer experience would probably be the third, the third part of that. So Richard, great. Thank you for joining us. Really appreciate you spending some time with us. Lots to see here from Kindrel at the show. We'll, we look forward to chatting again soon. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Future and Research live from the show floor. We'll see you next time.